Okay, okay, I know. I'm a couple weeks late to the Bone Lab train. It came out at the worst time for me. I had a full work schedule, went directly on vacation, then I got sick the first day I was back home. In fact, I took so long to make this video that an update came out a few days ago that addressed a lot of the issues the game had at launch. I'm still going to mention them, but I will also mention which ones are better when I do talk about them. Also in that time, there seems to have been a bit of an explosion in Bone Lab videos on the site, so hey look, another video to add to the pile. Anyway, you didn't click this video to listen to me explain why it took me so long to make it. Actually, I'm not sure why you clicked on my video of all videos, but hey, I'm happy to have you. I was originally going to stream the game, but I wanted to give it a proper playthrough and not just make it about content. Turns out that was the best idea because goddamn did this game drive me crazy at first. There were a few times where I was just shouting at nothingness because I missed a jump for the 12th time because the game decided I wasn't sprinting anymore. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. As I said, I wasn't able to play the game for the first few days, but from what I read and what I was told, it was disappointing, apparently. I kept my optimism high though, and when I finally did get to play, I could see why. Initially, even for someone who has completed Boneworks many times, the physics did feel kind of janky. The control scheme was the same, so I understood how to play and how everything worked, which is good because there isn't a great tutorial. But I'll talk more about that later. I saw a lot of complaints about index users not being able to pick up items with the grip pads. As an index user myself, I was concerned that I would not be able to play the game. It seems to work for me though. Most of the time I can't pick things up unless I use the grip and the trigger, which is normal for pulling things off of your inventory, but not for picking things up. At least not in Boneworks. Um, but I can let go of the trigger after I'm holding the item and it doesn't fall, which I saw was part of the issue most people were having. The puzzles, when they are there, are a bit more complex than Boneworks puzzles and are not nearly as intuitive to my mind. For instance, I had zero real issue with a single Boneworks puzzle. They were challenging, but still relatively easy to figure out. If it weren't for all the reading I did, I would not have figured out how to get to the campaign after leaving the elevator. And even then, it took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out exactly what to do with the crane. This has been rectified in the new update though, where they added an instruction board to the crane minigame. Although, after playing for a few more hours and having completed the story and just kind of let it settle in my mind, I'm now used to how the Bone Lab character handles with the physics and with the weapons, and I can certainly say I really fucking like this game. The campaign itself was enjoyable and varied, and in hindsight, a lot of the issues I had, looking at you, on the Moon, were due to me not thinking outside the box and not pushing my imagination to what's possible, and this might be the first game that didn't immediately bore me in a sandbox mode. In my opinion, after playing for a while, Bone Lab is not as janky as Boneworks was. There is definitely some jank, which is to be expected for a VR game, but a lot of it was more due to a learning curve. I had to unlearn some techniques from Boneworks due to changes to player locomotion, like how inertia is handled, or mantling up onto a ledge, because it's been improved to be easier, but because I was used to the more difficult version, it was difficult for me. There's also not much of an actual tutorial. There's some tutorialization as you play the game, which for someone who is used to the gameplay style, it's not much of a problem as it's mostly the same as Boneworks. But this is a huge problem for the many people playing this style of the game for the first time on the Quest 2. Boneworks wasn't available on any quest platform, so a lot of people who are playing Bone Lab are playing a Boneworks style game for the first time. They don't know all the quirks and how to make the VR full body avatar work for you. So there's people that are missing a good chunk of what you need to do and it makes it frustrating for them. And then they miss out on the rest of the game because they can't get past the first couple levels. Boneworks had the Museum of Technical Demonstration, which was a whole tutorial section that 
forced you to understand each concept and use it before you could continue through the level. And while I appreciate the attempt to integrate the tutorial more into the natural gameplay, it just loses a lot of the explanation aspect. This game opted for a Half-Life Alex style tutorial with on the controller prompts. The issue is that unlike Alex, these prompts don't exactly stop the game and can very easily be missed. I actually missed most of the tutorial prompts on my first playthrough and I wasn't even rushing. In the end though, after really grasping the new movement style, it is really fun. The first playthrough of Sprint Bridge was a frustrating mess, but when I replayed it for this video, I had a blast. Successfully making a sprint jump over a death pit and just continuing on felt awesome. And speaking of the avatar levels, god damn do I wish there was more of this kind of stuff. Street Puncher is so entertaining to play through and there's so many different ways to do it. Because that's the point. And the soundtrack? Just, just look. Lava Bridge was a really fun level too, but honestly just playing as heavy is a joy every time. In general, the whole idea and execution of avatar switching is really cool. It feels very polished and like a lot of thought went into it. But because the whole first half of the game is showcasing these avatars, and after those levels there's only like three times you actually need to switch, I can see why some people feel like it's an afterthought. Because of this. I've seen many complaints about some of the avatars, namely light and short, being completely useless, which I feel honestly misses the point. The game as of now is focused on being a sandbox. I mean, the light avatar is given to you in the level that falls under the mods category. It's there if you want it, not because you need it. Plus, let's be honest, most of the modded avatars don't bring in any extra utility, like heavy or tall. To match the avatars, the levels are also varied and unique, especially for VR. I mean, the whole second level after you get to the hub is just a full physics ride on a roller coaster with a turret mounted on it, which is just pure fun. In the same vein, the go-kart. Like, the go-kart is fucking awesome. I don't know what wizardry these guys pulled out of the void to make this thing work as well as it does, but holy shit. After another little learning curve, this thing feels so fun to drive, but very disorienting if you flip it. It feels so weird to actually be upside down in VR. Luckily, I'm immune to VR motion sickness somehow, so I don't instantly die if I flip it on accident like some people I've seen. And it doesn't end there. If you add the constrainer gadget, you can end up with some pretty interesting and hilarious results like this one. <laughs> I don't have too much to say on the visuals. The Nobody's Gotta Redo, which I personally really like. It's cleaner and more cohesive to the rest of the style. The lighting setup seems to be improved, and there's a lot more visual variety in the set dressing throughout. Uh, but in general, it just looks like more Boneworks. And I do mean that in a good way. They kept the art direction and the very deliberate, almost uncanny valley feel of MythOS while doing some slight improvements to the textures and model detail. What really impresses me is how they made this game work on the Quest with minimal graphical changes from PC. As expected, the soundtrack is spectacular. Even as polarizing as this game has been, it seems like everyone from day one has agreed that it's really just a labor of love. And it's so long too. There's 53 tracks on this thing. It's three and a half hours long and it's great. It packs a punch with the fast upbeat tracks for the action-packed levels and slow emotional tunes for the dramatic ending where you 
slaughter the people that tried to hang you. Plus everything in between. Considering this is an action sandbox first person shooter, I have to talk about the combat on its own. As promised, the melee does feel much better than it did in Boneworks. It's still not as good as some other VR games, but let's face it, most of us aren't playing the stress level zero games for one to one accuracy on sword melee combat. We're playing for the guns and the physics. Now the physics I already talked about, so let's go ahead with the guns. First off, weapon variety. So many more guns. To put it in perspective, Boneworks had four pistols, three SMGs with the MP5K having four variants, and two very similar rifle bases with a couple variants each. In Bone Lab, there's about nine different pistols, three different rifle bases with many variants, four SMG bases, and four shotguns. And those are just the ones I know of. And throughout the game, you get to play with most of them at one point or another. Now overall, I do have some good things and some not so good things to say about how the guns handle in Bone Lab. But I'll start with the good. The shotguns feel great. Again, at first they felt a bit wonky because they do feel a bit different than other VR shooters, but once you're used to it, in my opinion, these are the best feeling VR shotguns. I really enjoy that no matter how long the mag tube is, um, it's always five rounds. To me, the rifles feel sturdier and more manageable in this game than Boneworks. Uh, that's just because there's now proper collision within the stock and the player model shoulders, and they feel like less floaty when you're aiming. I know some people felt the virtual stock got in the way of what they were used to doing when in Boneworks, but to me, it's just another real learning curve that was ultimately for the better. And now for the not so good. While I like what they've done with the rifles, it feels as though it was at the expense of how good pistols feel in VR. I'm not sure exactly what it is or how to explain it, but the pistols feel as though they're pointing a bit downward from where they should be. And then when holding a pistol in both hands, your second hand can really influence what the pistol is doing in very unpredictable ways, especially with avatars like Strong. Uh, but again, after I got used to how they feel, I don't have as many problems, but I still do have a big issue with the secondary hand messing up where I'm trying to aim, especially in the heat of the moment. That's really all I have to say on the not so good aspect of the guns. It's also really cool how along with the environment the guns change size depending on the avatar in use. It is a real pain sometimes as it is practically impossible to reload a pistol as tall, but it just makes the game feel more immersive to me. For the most part, the storytelling was very similar to Boneworks in that it's sort of, it's there but you have to look for it way, with some key exceptions. The overarching story regarding you as a character is a lot more obvious than in Boneworks. Essentially, you are an AI that has developed sentience and was about to be executed by the Fantasyland civilization of Heaven's Reach, which is also made up of sentient AI. You are then saved and guided by Jimmy, a benefactor of Lava Gang. It is then learned that Jimmy is also a sentient AI who learned of his whole existence being a simulation through encountering bugs. What's really cool is these bugs that he encountered, a couple of them are basically canonized speedrunning techniques. Jimmy mentions a glitch with a valve that allowed him to launch himself at great speeds, which is something Boneworks speedrunners were doing. But this isn't really a lore video, this is more just my thoughts on the game as a whole. And while the story is there, and what is there is really interesting and even good in my opinion, this game isn't necessarily meant to be a story game. Bone Lab is a sandbox game, or maybe even like a sandbox platform with a game attached. The overall story is more focused on the actual idea of being a builder, not a player. And in the ending, Jimmy flat out tells you to basically, hey, go make mods. And that's the other really cool thing I like about this game's lore and story. All mods, every single mod, every mod, even the weird ones, are canon. 
they are canon to the Boneworks, Bone Lab, Stress Level Zero, crazy universe. Because we, the players, are a part of Lava Gang as modders. So yeah, mods are a huge part of what this game is supposed to be. Stress Level Zero released an SDK along with the game for easy mod making. As of recording this video, it still only supports avatars of basic level making, but that is not stopping this community. It is insane how many weapon mods have already been made without SDK support. Even more crazy is there are multiple working vehicle mods that people just made on their own. I mean, I imagine they used code from the go-kart, but even still, that's a lot of effort. I will always be impressed by the creativity and dedication of passionate modders, and I will always hold the utmost respect for developers who not only allow mods in their games, but encourage it. And all these mods just go to further serve the entertainment that is the expanded sandbox mode. There's quite a few more maps and a couple fun new gadgets that really just take it to the next level. And yes, I am talking about the Constrainer. If you ever thought that the tool gun in Gary's mod was cool, the Constrainer will be right up your alley. It's got a bunch of modes that I don't fully understand that are used to constrain objects to other objects in different ways. I've mostly just used the weld option, but even just that has been great fun. Well, I guess that's all my thoughts, really. Overall opinion is that it's pretty fun. I mean, it definitely has some shortcomings. It's not immune to criticism. And before this recent update, there were some really annoying choices and issues. But I am really excited to see where this game goes from here, both in mods and in updates. Seems like they do have something in the works that'll be coming later. There's quite a few references in game to B-Side, which might just be the big story campaign stuff that people really want to see, me included. But honestly, I'm just happy to have a new, good, non-super comfort gimmicky VR game. Well, if you stuck around for this long in the video, I want to sincerely thank you for watching. I took a lot of work putting this thing together. Uh, I've got some ideas for some future content, so if you're interested, stay tuned. Also, today, on the day that this video comes out, I will be streaming Bone Lab over at twitch.tv slash sethpotate, trying to get the My Pal Apollo achievement. If you're watching this as it came out, I'm likely live right now. But if you've stumbled across this anytime after, the VOD for that will be in the VOD channel. And the links are in the description. Anyway, that's all I've got. So thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you have a good day. Bye. Oh, I'm supposed to be dead? I'm supposed to be dead, huh? Well now you are dead. <laughs>